For you to be considered good at color grading, you must be able to detect. Find out what's lacking on any piece of footage you can come across, or figure out what's off of the mood you are trying to achieve. Is it the temperature? Is it the exposure? Or is it contrast? If you can't do that the very first time you look at the footage, this video is going to be helpful. Cinematic color grading is the process of enhancing and altering the color of footage in order to achieve a desired visual effect. Actually this is not just one thing, but it's a process with phases and stages in it. So in this video I'm going to take you through a piece of correct theory, that you just cannot go ahead without. Then we go through the curve, the color wheels and then I will demonstrate to bring our correct theory into a practical lesson. So here is the first one. Color grading versus color correction. It's very common for color grading and color correction to get mixed up. While color grading is as we've defined earlier, color correction is the step before grading, where you have to adjust color, contrast and exposure so that footage appears as natural and unprocessed as possible, the way our eyes experience scenes in real life. The three stages of the whole process. Taking from the definition I have just given, for the best result, our very first stage is color correction. And here you must make sure that the footage appears as natural and unprocessed as possible, ready for grading. Here you will make global adjustments as to alter the footage to tell a story, match a certain scene, or convey certain emotions. This is where more detailed adjustments are made to specific parts of the footage. In secondary color grading, the editor will isolate specific colors, highlights, shadows, and other areas of the footage, and adjust them independently. So in simple terms, firstly you balance the footage to look natural, secondly, you adjust colors to match your story, and thirdly, you adjust specific portions of the footage. So you must take note that these stages have nothing to do with the program you are using to edit your videos. Whether Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, Filmora, or Final Cut, in this video I will use Wondershare Filmora for examples, and I'm going to show you which feature is used in which stage according to the current version of Wondershare Filmora. So you are going to understand everything as we turn to the practical side of our lesson. Now let's go straight to the curves. So when you get on curves, you will see two axes, the horizontal axis, and the vertical axis. And this is the control curve, with the control point on the top and a control point below. Now there are blocks inside here, which mark the limits between the shadows, mid-tones and the highlights. So to darken your footage, just add a control point by clicking on the center, and then drag it down. And to expose the video just add a lock point on the end of the first block, can add the control point on the start of the fourth block. So when you drag up you will increase the highlights which is going to raise the mid-tones as well but still not affect the shadows. Now you can use any of these color graphs to adjust the shadows, midtones, and the highlights. So here is the good part. If you want to adjust a certain portion of your clip, just have to see the color tone. Example, let's say you want to deal with this portion and you don't know if they are shadows or midtones. Just use this tool right and then select the exact position you want to adjust. And automatically, a control point is added on the exact position you need to work on, which in this cab equals SER highlights, with midtones partly. So I will create a lock point here so that shadows won't be affected. Then you can increase or reduce the bluish highlights tonal. So I'm not going to delete this. I will just add another carve handle. Add two more control points just to show you how you can achieve a cool cinematic look in simple steps. Now let us go on to color wheels. When you look at these three wheels, you can see how similar they are with the curves. So I would like to put this in simple terms. You can use the color wheels to correct or to alter the brightest parts of your video, despite the color. And you can do that on a highlights wheel. So that means you can adjust the exposure of your image using the color wheel. 
You can use the pointer inside the circle to indicate the tone of the highlights you want to adjust. Now, the midtones are in the middle range of brightness of the clip or image. By increasing the brightness of midtones, you are actually reducing the contrast of your video. And it's the opposite way when you reduce it. Moving on to the shadows, these are the darkest pixels in the clip. Decreasing the brightness of the shadows will bring instant depth, and at the same time it gives contrast to your video. For a quick way to warm up or cool down the tone in your video, just shift the color of your shadows towards red or blue. Now that we know how curves and color wheels work, let's jump right into our practical lesson. So we have this clip right here. So the first thing is to understand, just as I said earlier, which tools do we use in the first stage of grading, and also in the second and in the third. So according to the current version of Wondershare Filmora, we use the color tab, light tab, and adjust tab for the first stage of grading. So to figure this out, you just need to have the correct theory, as we have given it before, and know how each tool works. So it's a combination of understanding how tools work and what is being done in each stage of grading. Okay, on the second stage, we use color tab, light tab, color wheels, and curves. So depending on how the tool works, it can be used at different stages. Just like the color tab, it can be used to balance the footage for a natural look, which is the first stage, color correction. And it can also alter the footage to a specific scene, which is the second stage. So in the third stage, we need curves and HSL. So the allocation of these tools depends on how each tool works, which can vary according to the software you are using. So let us get started. So in the first stage of the theory, we will be looking at these tabs. Okay, so here I will reduce the temperature to around 5.7, the tint to 7.2, increase the vibrance to around 6, and then saturation to 4. So I close the color and move on to the light. Here I will leave the exposure as it is, then slightly reduce the brightness. Minus 2. Increase the contrast to 5.3, and then reduce the highlights to something like 8.4. So here I will leave the shadows, black and white as they are, and then slightly increase the sharpness. So here is the result of our first stage, the color correction process. So let's move on to the second stage. Right here I will start with the color wheels, and here I will just focus on the midtones. I will slightly move the selector point up, and then drag the level down and pop that orange warm color. So right here I will focus on my highlights as well as the midtones. So I will add a lock point here to avoid disturbing the shadows. Then add a control point, and slightly raise the curve handle up. Now at this point, our second stage is done. Now let's see exactly how to go about the third stage. And our first tool here is the HSL. So here we have the eight color channels. So we will adjust four of them. So the first one as you can see is going to pop up the jacket as well as these portions. I will increase the hue, the saturation, and then reduce the luminance. On the second color I will reduce the hue, increase the saturation, and then reduce the luminance. On the third color I will slightly reduce the hue, increase the saturation, and then reduce the luminance. And on the fourth, I will do the same. Right here I will select the temperature color channel and add three control points.
Here I will warm the highlights. Then I leave the center control point as the locking point and then cool down the shadows. And this will bring a perfect S. Now let's see all the before and after of what we have created. And if you guys comment positively, I will bring another complete guide to LATS. Really there was a lot of research and effort made to put up all this information together. So if you guys appreciate this video, please like, comment, and do subscribe.